All right, folks, we are here today with Brittany Pino from Brittany Pino and Associates out in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Brittany, how the heck are you? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me, Sunit. Heck yeah. So, um, you know, we were just talking a little bit offline and we know each other from Cheplax Group, which is awesome. And we could have, we could have a, full, a full podcast just talking about Cheplax and the group, but <laughs> next time. Uh, so, Brittany... Uh, is a single mom. She is the sole agent, right, at your brokerage with four admin staff. And I think this next part is so amazing. She buys zero leads. Zero. But is going to sell around 100 homes this year. Wow. <laughs> I spend a lot of money on leads. We were talking about this what are you doing? Lay it out for these people listening that want to know how the heck can that even happen? Yeah. So, you know, I think the biggest thing that um, people think in this business that there's just some kind of like, buy it, you know, learn it. It's a magic button, some magic pill that we, you know, we find it and we have a holy grail and then we just kill it. So, um, but what I'm here to say is I've done this for this is going on 17 years. I started this business when I was a baby. I was 20 when I got into real estate and really have not forgotten the basic fundamentals and foundation of the real estate business. You know, people essentially want to work with somebody they know, they like, and they trust. And whenever they are thinking about buying or selling or if somebody around them is thinking about buying or selling and mentions it, you want to be the first person they think of. Totally. So, I mean, that's like the basic fundamentals. So over the years, I have kept, you know, those things in mind. And so how do you do that? How do you, how do you build that and, and get these people to use you? I mean, I had a call, like my favorite call. I had a guy call me yesterday, left me a voicemail and said, Brittany, um, you know, this is so-and-so and you sold our house for us in this neighborhood about 14, 15 years ago and we are wanting to possibly sell again. And so they're calling me and um, I can tell you, like, I, I don't want to like throw myself under the bus here, but I'm really not, <laughs> I am not a great dialer. I have had, I have, I, I could tell you that I have people like, power hour and you know they're like all very salesy and they're on the phone I see these teams I'm like that's amazing but I've never done that either <laughs> I'm not like I keep in touch with people but it's I think it's all just really authentic um you know I'm not going to just start calling and like hammering people on a list um like they're on a list I need to talk to them I feel like when people lose sight of the relationship the real meats and potatoes about what this is. These are people's lives um, to listen and to care about what's going on with them. When they lose sight of that and they just become like a salesman, a used car salesman, and they're just, you know, dialing that, that person feels it immediately. Sure. So then it puts distance. I think they may think about that whenever they are planning on buying or selling, like how that relationship feels versus maybe something that another agent has established more authentic connection with them. So in going to how did you build your business? People know you, like you, trust you, and how? Well, I can tell you that there's little bitty things oh. every single day. My goal is to make things better than they were before. For example, if, if a client calls me in the process, here, here's an example. Years ago, I had a client call me, it was like 2007, they're like, hey, Brittany, you know, where can we find our house online? I'm like, you know, I hate that they had to ask me that. Why didn't I provide that proactively prior to them ever? If any client asks me a question, I'm fixing it. That means I'm going to put it in my checklist and in my process to make sure that this is something people want to know when they're in the process to give it to them before they ask. Yes. So it puts me in a very proactive mode. I can do a lot more than if you've ever been in a business where this person's like, what was the feedback? Uh, where's my house online? What, what is this? 
and what are you doing? You're reacting, reacting, causing content. I think once you establish that with the client very early on, hey, where can I find my house online? From that point forward, they are thinking they need to call you and ask you to get a reaction, to get whatever it is they need. So I've got to fix that, right? So I've got to let them relax and let them know I've got it under control. So we fix the process. And every day we tweak them like, add that into the checklist, but do it a week earlier than we're doing it. Because they're asking for it now. Three people asked for it before we got to them. And that's, I'm failing at that point. If they have to ask me, I've failed. I don't want my phone to ring from my sellers, my buyers. Like they are getting from me before they need to ask for it. Like I know better what they need than they know because they do a hundred homes a year, sold thousands of homes. I know exactly how this process goes. I know what they need. And so I'm there to provide it before they ever have to ask. So I think that right there, the process has to be seamless for people. They have to feel uh, taken care of, that you are knowledgeable, that you have it under control, and then they're most likely to talk about it while they're in the process. So if the lady at work with them is also thinking about selling their house, they get a lot of current client referrals because like, oh, we're using her and she's great, right? So use her. And so it's I've really just built it based on like, how I treat my clients, how I treat the process, being very proactive versus reactive. Um, going back to the client that said, where can I find my house online? So now every single client, when I list their home, as soon as it goes active in MLS, they receive an email from us. Your home online. Thank you so much for choosing us. We are committed to providing excellent service. Below are the links to view your home online. Here, 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 here. You can share it on Facebook and here's a you know, attachment of all your documents. And that's just one little thing in the process, but they are hearing from us and they're getting from us before they need to ask. You know, I don't want it to be like a hungry baby that's just screaming and you're like, oh, he needs to eat, you know? And so then you're feeling, you gotta know about these scheduling things, right? So that's just one little thing. I think it, it, it's, it's just the foundation of this business. Uh, you know what? That's really insightful and I love that. In fact, I'm like thinking of calling my listing manager right after this and telling her, hey, we got to add this. <laughs> we got yes. Well, anytime they call, your clients are telling you how you need to fix something. So if they call you and say, you know, hey, we didn't get feedback from XYZ showing. Well, a couple of things have happened there. One, you haven't set the expectation. They don't know when they're supposed to get feedback, how they're supposed to get it, who they're supposed to call, why they haven't gotten it. So... I always tell my client, my, my team, like if we're calling for feedback, what we want to do is, unfortunately, what, 50% of the agents in the market just don't, they think no offer is feedback enough, right? Yep. So how we address that is that we set the expectation early on. So when they, when we're listing their home, I talk about the whole process and I talk about this is what's going to happen at feedback time. Then they have their first showing request. Every single seller is going to hear from me once they have their first showing request, and I'm going to remind them at that point. Hey, isn't that exciting that your first showing request? Do you know how to work the showing time app? Just want to make sure you were familiar with it and you were able to approve the showing, but also let's talk about the feedback. This is how this is going to go, right? Usually I tell my sellers, if I hear from the agent before I have to call them, if they call me while they're at the house or right when they leave, that's a great sign. It means they're really interested. If I have to chase them down, then likely they're not, but like, I want to know what else are they considering? What did they not like about our house? Did they buy something else? Does that client have a house to sell? Things like that. Um, so I lay it all out, but then I also, okay, so if, if they have to call me, I didn't set the expectation during that time. And then if we are calling, the, they have set the expectation, but we're calling the agent just haven't gotten feedback. We're going to let that seller know during that time. Hey, Mr. Or Mrs. Seller, just wanted to let you know we are actively working on trying to get feedback from this agent. We haven't yet heard from them. We'll let you know as soon as we do. So what that tells the sellers, we are on top of it. We are working on it versus we're working on it in the background, but we didn't communicate that to the seller. They have to call us and say, well, did you hear, hear feedback? What are we doing now? We're reacting. Oh, we've tried to call them, but we didn't. If they have to call you first, you fail. Fail. Nope. So we call them first. Like we haven't gotten anything. I just want to let you know that we're working on it. And so it's these tiny little tweaks in the process. They love it. They just feel so at ease. I don't have my sellers are happy. They close are like that was so easy or so professional. 
Um, and, and we try to make sure so that we, we can do a great job is that we stay super crazy consistent. I read this book like years ago, you probably know, Raving Fans. Okay, one story stood out to me like forever, I think it's in that book, but it was about the guy who goes to get his hair cut or something and, and they, he walks in and it's like warm towel and then he gets this and would you like something to drink and he gets his hair cut, but it really wasn't the haircut that he loved so much, it was the whole process and experience. But then he goes back to get his hair cut again at the same place because he loved the experience and it was like they were busy and they just put him in the chair and then like shoveled him, it was not the same experience. So what we pride ourselves in is that every client gets the same experience. So we have a system and a process that when we list the house, they get their your home online email. The next step is this. The next step is this. They all get that. So if they refer a friend, they can be confident that their friend is going to also have a similar experience. Yes. That's insightful. I'm learning right. so much. Am I taking yeah. mental notes as I sit here? Um, I love that those processes on the listings, yes. Because I mean, you know, I we take a lot of listings, a lot, and uh, it's hard to be consistent. It's hard, yeah. super hard. So good yeah. job there. So um, let's talk about that guy who called you 15 years later. Yeah, right? For a second. Because I mean, how often do we really think that that happens? All right, I mean, I felt like that was just, that was amazing. 15 years later. Yeah. And you had previously said too, like, you know, I don't sit there and dial for dollars, mm -hmm. but, okay. so, but there was one of two things that happened. You are maybe a combination of those two things. Mm -hmm. Did you nurture him or did you just wow him when you sold his house that much that he remembered to call you back? So I do have a keep in touch process. Every single client that I work with, obviously have follow up boss. I have a CRM. So my database, my database, like your database, your number one thing. If the building is on fire and you have to take one thing, you better grab your database. You got nothing. <laughs> Forget the lock boxes. You can buy more. Like your database is it. That's all you need. Your whole business. Yep. You could be like, I'm a real estate agent. I got my database right here. That's all you need. So it's your people. And so when they go into there, I'm consistent. It's again, it's consistency. We, we mail to them, we email to them. Um, when we do mailers too, like once these people are my clients, I love my clients. Like I love what I do. I really do connect with them. I really do care about their process. Um, and so I'm gonna send them a Christmas card. I mean, they're gonna have like my pictures of my kids every single year, they're getting a Christmas card from me. Sure. I appreciate them and I remember their process and I remember like this guy called me 15 years ago. I like, I know his, his old address. I remember it. I was like, I remember, I remember like that I did, I mean, this is back in forever. It was 15 years. I was like, I remember I did open house. I remember a lady I met at the open house. It's just bizarre, but, um, <laughs> right. And so I just, I remember these things. And so, um, they matter to me. So I keep in touch with these people in, in ways that are not like, okay, I'm just dialing, I'm dialing. I'm friending them on Facebook. I'm liking things that they're doing on Facebook. I'm following them in their life. Back then, I didn't have Facebook, but since then, I've connected with them on social, you know? Nice yeah, and so they're going to see, right? And then they're going to see, I'm hoping they like my business page, but they're going to see kind of what I'm doing still in the real estate market. I'm very active. I do a lot of video. Sure do. We email those things out. Yeah, so we email those out. But they're going to get maybe things like the calendars and the football schedules and things that have a long shelf life, but it's like clockwork every year. Every year, they're getting them. So there, it's that, those touches. I promise I'm not the, I'm not the best at this. I'm not the, whatever the book was that you have like 15 touches a year. Probably not, not me, maybe three or four, no. you know, and I lose some people too over the time when you're looking like, dang, I didn't keep in touch with them. And they bought, they yeah. sold their house with their, you know, their, they got married and their new husband's brother's a realtor, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Sucks, you know, to count those missed opportunities, but um, it is exciting when they do, you know, when they do come back around, especially after such a long period of time. But I try to keep in touch, you know, and again, just being consistent. I don't just like, this sounds like a good idea and then fire it off, see if it works and then stop doing it. Right. I just stay consistent. So do you think that there's anything special in your keep in touch program besides just the fact that you're doing it? Do you think there's like one special thing that really makes a difference or you think is, Hey, I've been consistent for 17 years. And that's all that it took was 
consistency and being thoughtful about it, right? Well, I think that it's a number of things, Sunny. I think that they, they had the experience in working with me for one. They also, I do a lot of like print marketing, digital marketing, you know, whether it be, I have none running right now, but I've done like radio ads or they see it's evidence of success. They may see my signs out still like we used her, we used her, you know, like it's just kind of constant brand recognition and, and you know, that awareness. Um, they're getting the mailers from me or they're seeing me on social. And I really feel like, I mean, John's a genius, you know that, right? So those market updates and um, just the walkthroughs and the educational videos, really just letting them know consistently that I'm still in it, that I'm very knowledgeable, that I am successful. Here's all, look at these listings and the way that I market listings, the way that I present these homes online, all of these things I think combined is really what solidifies that you know, to make them call me again. If I just, if I kept in touch with them, send them a Christmas card every year for the last 15 years and they haven't seen anything from me other than that, other like real estate related or anything, they probably would have called me. Yeah. And I think just with all of it together, just laying on really thick, it's like no matter where they are, maybe they see a full page in the in register magazine, or maybe they saw a real estate sign or the video online and the mailer, then it, then it's better. I love it. You're giving a, high, me, a better chance of them calling. You're giving me so many ideas right now. It's Yay. Crazy. It's just the basics. I don't know. If you can, don't forget about it. You know, because we get so like big, like new idea, new idea, new idea. And I think it's just those little bitty things that just. I mean, yeah. You know, we, um, like, in, like in my business, we're at a point where it's massive now, right? So, uh, like, I don't think to mail somebody a Christmas card anymore. Like, that sucks. Don't forget. But see, and that's the thing, you know, I, I, I was an ind individual agent for a very, very long time. And then I grew a team for a stint from like 2011 to 18. And then I went back to being an individual agent. And I noticed a tremendous difference. Tremendous. When you are a big team, I think sometimes, like as a team leader, whoever, like I feel like it, it does put distance between you and the client because you're so focused on helping those agents that work for you be busy and dialing and these things. But like we forget about the people and the relationships of the people. We want them to call us, but it's like we, we forget about that. It's a relationship business, like where your kids go to school. The last time we bought and sold a house, like that you, things that are happening in their life. Like you follow them on Facebook, like, these are real people. And so instead of connecting at that level, we just go to like the driver business dialer side of things, which is, I feel like it's a lot more diluted. You get a lot less result that way. So I think doing both is, would be amazing. Maybe it's a link between teaching your agents about that. Know you like you trust you business building. Like, Hey, when's the last time you sent a Christmas card or whatever, you know, um, a handwritten note, are we forgetting that? You know, like 10 a week, set a goal, lunches, coffee, break bread, stop buys, pop buys, notes. Like those are the things that matter more than like family, occupation, recreation, dream. Hey, what are you doing? Next. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about. I, Ford. <laughs> I, yes, I got it really. Okay. That was cool. well, I've been there. I've done it all. And the thing is, too, that my mind goes to is they're probably a lot more profitable. I'm really profitable. Yes. I'm very, very, very profitable. I'm not sharing. I mean, we have overhead, but because, because of the health of my business, I am able to then spend so much more in, like, how we market what puts, puts like leaps and bounds between myself and all the other agents in the market. Um, right now, if you look at like the top 50 in the whole entire greater Baton Rouge market, um, as an individual, I'm ranking up there, been like top 10, um, competing with like all these big teams and track home builder names and all that. Nobody else up there is, is an individual by themselves without like, you know, people's numbers with them. Um, and then my average days on market right now shows 34 days which is less than anybody in the top 50. Really? You know, so we're selling faster for more money. My average sale price is super fat. It's great. 
Um, but we have like we're I have a videographer that I pay a salary to and he works exclusively for my clients. I don't share that. Um, that's a marketing piece that I feel is is an edge. Um, and that's another thing with my business. Like, yes, building the relationship, but you can't just do that and not be good at what you do. So you have to be really damn good. And so I pride myself in just I'm constantly looking for the next, like, just most cutting edge marketing, target market. Like when I look at a listing, I walk in and say, who is my buyer and how do I reach them? Every listing that I take, I essentially approach it with somewhat of a customized process. Yes, we have a system and process checklist for a consistency, but each listing is its own, right? So I want to know how can I make this house sell? Like I have success stories where like it's on the market for a year with other agents, it didn't sell. I'm able to come in there and look at it and say, well, why didn't it sell? What's wrong with it? Let me fix it. I have resources. So that's another thing like, you need a painter, you need an electrician, you need a plumber. Like I have these people, we get them in there, we figure it out, we knock it out, paint it, whatever needs to be done. I've done them and I'm like, oh, sold in full price 12 days later, bye. You know, and so, I mean, it's, it's important to also be really good at what you do and to constantly be a student, like completely obsessed with that process. You know, how we market, how we show up online. I'll Google myself all the time, like, how am I showing up? Like, what are my list? If somebody is going to hire me and they're like, let me just Google Brittany Pino. Let me just search her Facebook. I constantly put myself in that position and then look at like what people are seeing online. How am I presenting? What's wrong? Is my profile outdated on something? Is, is something like bad pictures or something blurry? Like some random stranger. I didn't want them to see this. So I'm fixing and I'm constantly watching how we present. You know, researching your own self. Is okay. Yeah. Reviews. Do I have enough reviews? How do I size, you know, measure up to other agents? Sure. Great. So, yes. You got my wheels turning, my friend. Yay. Uh, since we're running low on time, if you have some advice to our listeners, and our listeners are agents uh, in my market, hopefully, some of your market listens and everybody in between as well as our peers, I think yes. something much, um, what would your advice be to the uh, typical agent who'd be watching this? The typical agent, um, database, number one, your people who are in there. I hope that you have one. I hope that you are maintaining it. You know, it's, it can be described like a pond. You have fish in there, are you feeding them? Are you keeping your pond clean? Are you taking care of them? So your database is number one. Um, it's a relationship business and then you need to be really, 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 really good at what you do. Being proactive, not reactive, being resourceful, a problem solver, just really caring about the process, really caring about your clients. Each one, like I don't work like a hunter, I work like a farmer. That one client, my goal is to make that one client such a raving fan that I get at least three or four referrals from them in the next 60 to 90 days. And I don't have to ask. I'm not like a used car. So I'm like, hi, can, can I ask you who you can refer? Like I'm not, I'm not that person. Good. I'm not a sales person in that, in that respect. I, I don't, you know, you don't want to be that guy. Like when you go looking for cars and you're like, don't get out there. He is you're like trying to drive away for the salesman. I don't want to be that sales guy. I'm here to help answer questions, no pressure, and be, you know, all the information. I feel like if you can be that for your clients, they're going to see it, they're going to feel it, they'll trust you, and they're going to work with people who are successful. Great advice. If people want to reach out to you, maybe they have a referral in Baton Rouge, or maybe want to pick your brain some more, how should they do it? Um, my social media, I'm super active there. We have um, our Facebook, our business Facebook is Brittany Pino and Associates or Facebook forward slash Pino and Associates. Um, you can Google me. You know, all my contact information is anywhere online. I have a firm here in Baton Rouge. Easy peasy. Thanks for coming on, Brittany. Thanks, Bonnie.